Hello everyone, today we're going to paint a poppy in a meadow. I'm Diane and welcome to my studio where every day we paint together on a fun and helpful project to guide you on your watercolour journey. And please remember to subscribe and turn on notifications if you can as this really helps us and makes sure you don't miss a thing. So let's get started. So today we're going to do a little meander through the countryside, a kind of um, summer meadow, uh, beginning of the summer meadow scene with a poppy or more than one poppy perhaps, <coughs> some daisies and some buttercups. And uh, maybe just to liven the whole thing up, a few flying creatures, dragonfly, bee, ladybird, something like that. And um, I'm going to do this in a very... Um, intuitive kind of way. So this is my sketch that I did earlier this morning, um, just to give me some ideas of how I was going to, to go about it. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to um, do a drawing, and I'll show you how I draw these different um, elements of the design. And then I'm going to put some paint on the paper, and then finish off with some touches of ink. So it's going to be kind of ink and wash or ink and watercolour but doing it the other way around so putting the paint the drawing then the paint then the pen and it does make a difference actually which way around you do it you tend to be much more structured if you put the ink on first and I really like that system too then the paint is just a sort of afterthought but this way around um, you're concentrating more on the colour to give shape um, and then you just highlight things at the end. So let's get started. And I'm going to begin with the uh, large poppy at the top there, an open poppy, which when I do poppies, normally, often anyway, I, um, I do them very, very loosely. And I just throw paper, uh, sorry, paint onto the paper. Um, that's a good way of doing it too. That's very... Uh, what's the word? Um, freeing, uh, exciting, um, relaxing, uh, whatever it uh, does to you. But it's it does tap into the emotions a bit more. Um, but today uh, I'm going to draw the poppy first. And you can see that I'm doing a, a big petal at the back here. And then a curved one on the left hand side there and on the right hand side another one which is also somewhat curved and I'm holding my pencil loosely and I'm holding it well away from the point uh, which helps to uh, make your whole um, all of your work seem a little bit more uh, hesitate to say artistic but certainly more relaxed anyway if you hold it down here like this and you draw, for one thing, you can hardly see what you're doing because your hand's in the way. Secondly, you're going to put ink, uh, grease all over the painting because your hand's on the paper. Um, so no, you don't do it like that. You hold the pencil nearer to the end, about two thirds of the way along. This is an old Faber-Castell pencil that uh, has been around for years. And uh, so then you, first of all, you lose some of your inhibitions and secondly, you produce a much better piece. So now I'm painting the center of the flower, which in the middle has a kind of star-shaped, starburst kind of thing, which is dark, and we'll deal with that when we come to the ink side, surrounded by a, a yellow area, and then you've got all the um, anthers, aren't they, that come out, and on the end of them, You've got the, oh my God, I can't remember any of my biology. Anyway, so you've got these sticky out bits with these pieces on the end there. Help me, somebody. I'll go and look it up in a minute. So you've got that. And so now we've got one big petal at the back to the front front, and then this one big petal area here, which has got a kind of bend in it. So it goes round, up, down, up, down, and round. And then we're going to draw the stem and poppies tend to have a bit of a curve in their stem so we'll just you see I'm not drawing a long straight line I'm just sweeping it down in short strokes to join together when it gets you know, as you go along 
because, you know, that's better, isn't it? Um, maybe I'll put the bumblebee in up here now because um, that will give me a little bit more, uh, what's the word, perspective. So we'll just do our little croissant and a little, uh, little wings and the antennae and the hanging down legs of the bee. They hang down like that. I know they have six, but six looks silly, so we only put four. And they kind of come together like that. They tend to hang down a bit like that. And then in here, we'll pop in our dragonfly. So we'll draw the body first like that. And then the bit where it gets bigger at the front and the eye. And then um, just indicate the wing coming out like that on either side. And then the one behind and on this one like that. And there, lo and behold, you have a dragonfly. And they have legs too, but I don't think we'll bother putting those in. That will spoil the artistic effect. We have two legs in the front. That's enough. Then down here, I'm going to pop a um, ladybug, as they call them in America. We call them ladybirds. God knows why. Trust the English to get it wrong. Um, little black head. Probably got antennae like that. And then spots. And they have wings. When they fly, obviously, their wings open up. So we'll pop him in there. Okay, now the rest of the flowers. This is a poppy in full flower, so we're going to put in a... Um, obviously, we need to put one in that's not fully open. So we're going to do a nice curving stem. I think when they're growing, before they open up, they tend to come over at the top, don't they? Like that. And... Uh, so then the container for the new flower and just opening. So there's a little bit of red there and then they have um, spines, something like that. And then um, when they have finished flowering, they form a seed head, don't they? So that's a kind of like a cup, like a... Uh, a chalice or something like that, uh, shaped like that. And then at the top, there is this arrangement where, oh, I remember we used to, when we did them at school, um, it's a pepper pot. It was called a pepper pot dispersal system where the seeds are formed inside this. And when they're ready to be thrown around by the wind, all these open up to make holes and the seeds disperse out of there. I remember that all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm just going to take some of that pencil off there and improve that shape a little bit. There we are. So that's the, the pepper pot for the poppies. And then um, I'm going to put some daisies in now. So we'll have a stem coming up here. And the daisy uh, leaf is kind of a little bit like that. And we'll just grow that one up there. And then this one is fully open. In fact, it's on the point of closing up. Uh, sorry, losing its petals. So we'll, we'll put the head like that. And then the petals just hanging down all around. Something like that. And we'll put some more um, leaves here. Okay, and then we want one that is... Um, more fully open. I don't think I've left myself enough space up there. I think what I'm going to do, let's not uh, hesitate, let's do it like this. I'll take out my pepper pot. I'll put that in again down here. There we go. And that gives me room here now for the, the open daisy. So there's the centre, and then we're going to do the petals all around, just loosely like that. You can have so many petals, can't they? And then the stem coming down, we we'll take that behind. The poppy down like that. And then out here, let's have a 
buttercup. Buttercup stem creeping along the ground, as buttercups are prone to. And so we have a flower that isn't yet open there. And then up here we're going to have, we do the centre and then uh, they have five petals. So one, two, three, four, five. And then they have these very characteristic pointy leaves like that. And just here we'll have a one that's not quite open. So three sepals and then the bud underneath and the characteristic leaves. Down here when we come to doing the painting we'll put in some more grasses and so on and so forth. Um, okay, so that's probably all I need in that painting. We might want to put a few um, poppy leaves like that in here. That's pretty much how they go, sort of spiky, like that. And this daisy hasn't got any leaves, so we'll just drop those in two. There we are. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. So the next step will be to paint. And um, I was just testing some of my colours there. Uh, this is um, cadmium red light and um, alizarin crimson, which is what I'm going to use for the poppy. Then my other four colours are two yellows, which is a lemon yellow and um, quinacridone gold. And my favourite, uh, cobalt blue and sap green. And those colours are all I'm going to be using, plus at the end a little bit of ink. So this is my uh, outline of the poppy flower. So I'm just going to first of all drop in some, um, some cadmium red with a little bit, little bit of um, quinacridone gold there as well to indicate possibility that the light might be being caught. And I shall also put a little bit of the quinacridone here as well. This is the first layer of colour and then um, mixing alizarin with cadmium red. I'm going to come in for the, the uh, two nearer petals and I'm just, I'm going to sort of kind of paint around the centre of the flower, but not really, I'm not really trying to avoid the centre because we'll have to paint that in at the end anyway. In, in black, we'll put that in in ink and perhaps, I don't think I'll use black paint. Anyway, so we're going to let this blend, do its own thing a little bit. Can't resist a little bit of wet in wet. And then the front petal here, same thing. Okay, so I think um, just bring that round a little bit further there. That part of that petal is darker. This part is a bit darker, so we just drop a bit more colour in there and let it do its, its um, whatever it's going to do. A little bit more at the back there. Okay, it won't look like that when it's finished, so we'll leave that to get on with its business. Um, meanwhile, let's go to the quinacridone gold and uh, I'm going to pop in here some quinacridone and some red. And a little bit of green, and that's for the uh, the bud. Let that do its thing, and then I'm just going to draw the colour up and out for the stem. Okay. 
and come back in with a little bit more colour. And here's an example of where the colour is a little bit too rich. So you don't panic, just lift it out slightly like that and then let it dry. And here we have our pepper pot. I'm just going to pop in some green there. Then I'm going to pick up some quinacridone and I'm just going to drag that down. Drag that green down to where it came from. And then the top part is yellowish. And then when we come to do the ink, we'll put some dots in there to indicate the little holes in the pepper pot. And then we've got a daisy up here. So we'll make that lemon to start with little bit of quinacridone there and then a, maybe a little tiny bit of red there and then very light cobalt blue in some of the petals just just a little dash like that nothing uh, detailed at all and draw that in so that the yellow can blend with the shadow a little bit. Let that dry and again draw down the stem. Break your um, green with a bit of blue for some of the leaves. Uh, for others uh, leave, it, leave it more sap green and for others break it with some quinacridone or lemon yellow. And uh, we have uh, another poppy leaf here so we'll just, it's easier, being right handed it's much easier to do this kind of stroke going that way than it is going that way. I should turn the paper around really, that would be sensible wouldn't it? Now we're just going to bring down the stem for the big poppy, like that. Don't worry too much about details. And then we want some a lighter green for uh, the step. I'm not going to do the stem first, no, sorry. We'll start that again, we go back to the yellow. So this is the daisy that's on the way out, so to speak. Yellow with a bit of canacridone in there. And then the same thing, whoops, the same thing that we did with that daisy, we're going to just indicate the petals with blue. There we go. And now over here we have this cup. Don't forget this stem. Just vary your greens, make them, make them different. Macridone gold in sap green gives you quite a natural colour. Try to keep more than one colour on your brush at the same time and then you'll get a variegated mix which you couldn't beat it, you can't beat it. It happens by accident, but it's much more natural than if you try to control everything, I think. Now the buttercup stem, in a brownish shade there, just because. And then we've got some... Uh, 
a bud there, so we want some green. Yeah, a bit more, and then something. Let something bleed in a little bit. Lots of different techniques for doing these things. Okay, so then we are now, oh, I'm going to need a little bit of black, aren't I, for black for the bumblebee. I can find my black, what did I do with it? I think it's in here it is. One of his segments is black and this one there too. And then just pop his legs in. This is bottom. We let that dry before we put the wings and the yellow bits in and we'll pop over to the dragonfly. And I'm just going to attempt my famous one stroke wings. because less is more, especially when it's a case of a dragonfly. And then we just drop his segments in like that and link that a little bit. We let that dry. And bumble, uh, ladybird, ladybird, there we go, ladybird. Two colours of red. And I think, I don't know what colour the wings are. I'm going to guess that they're on the bluish side, so we'll just do something like that. And I know their head's black. And we have to wait before we paint the dots in, don't we? Bit more yellow in the middle of the this particular daisy. And I think, yeah, that's nearly dry, not quite. So we'll come back to that shortly. But I want to uh, put in some grasses down the bottom. I'm just trying to mix up something not too green. Not too brown either. I'm only using one brush for this. Dropping in a bit of water to loosen that up a bit. And then if you blot it away a little bit, you get a kind of um, broken background. And then we'll do some more strokes on top of that shortly. Um, now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this poppy with just a few strokes. Um, let me see. So that goes round. Because of the papery effect of the petals on the poppy, 
sometimes it's a good idea to just dab away a little bit with paper towel. Okay, I'm going to stop and let that dry. Okay, I'm back. And now we're going to come to the last stage of this painting, which is to do the pen and ink side of it. So back to my uh, trusty Stettler pigment liner here. And um, question is now, where shall I start? Shall I start at the top or at the bottom or in the middle? Or shall I just kind of gradually meander around? Um, I tell you what, the bee is calling for me. He says, I want my antennae put in, so I'll do that. And then I'll just put some very light uh, indication there of his wings. Don't want to go crazy about that. And then the dragonfly the same. And uh, just as a, uh, to annoy myself, I'm going to swap out my pen for a one, a point one, rather than the point three, which I had picked up. I think I want thinner lines. So dragonfly wings don't need much, just a tiny little bit of uh, definition there where they overlap and a little bit of stabilization for the body. I'll tell you what, also I'm going to do just lift out a little bit of that blue there so we have him slightly, uh, slightly less um, solid in colour. Then we have our um, ladybird and we're going to put some, I'm going to do that in paint. And the reason is because the ink isn't showing up very well on the red paint. So we're just popping some spots there for the ladybird. You have to be ready to change your plan at all uh, all times, don't you? You can't say, oh, I was going to do it like that and just go ahead and do it like that. Sometimes you have to change your plan. Like life, really. We've all had to change our plans recently, haven't we? Hmm, can't think why. Right. If I'd have uh, imagined, I could never have imagined um, before the pandemic that I would ever be doing this for a living instead of what I was doing before, but like a lot of people, um, things changed around us. Anyway, back to the subject matter in hand. This is the uh, the poppy and that's come out quite well. And I'm just going to use the pen in the center here to indicate the, the star-like pattern in the middle. I don't normally paint with this much detail, so this is quite unusual for me. But then I'm going to go back to my thicker pen for these uh, things that I forgot to look up the names of. Stamens, I suppose. and Ah, oh, anthers, that's what they are. Anthers, stamens and anthers. Nine out of ten for that. Took me a while. That's right, isn't it, Tamsin? <laughs> okay, so we're putting some of those in, putting them in a little bit unevenly. And a few dots for the heck of it. There we are. Something like a dot to keep you happy. Uh, now then, the petals. I don't want to spoil this because it's looking okay. So we'll just try to just very lightly define some of the frilly bits on the petals. This one is uh, kind of overhanging, so... Bring that round like that. I'm not going to do much here, like I say, because I'm afraid of spoiling it. And we don't want to do that, do we? So there we are. And there's that. Now um, the next thing is the daisy, and this is also it's run quite nicely there, hasn't it? So we're going to just scribble in. Scribbling is good. A few um, petals there. And this one here, we've got um, the uh, seed head of the poppy. So that's got those little circles there. And, and this is a bud and that has these little hairs. 
See how nicely that came out in the end? It didn't look very promising at the beginning, did it? But it turned out okay in the end. And a few dots on the head of this daisy. And then we're going to just do a few more petals like that, just very light. Some dots in the center of this buttercup. And then the petals like that. Um, what else? We've done all of that. Okay, down here we've got a, a bud of the buttercup. Another one. And then so we can put in some center veins of some of these leaves, sharpen them up a little bit. Not too much though, because really at the end of the day, We've probably got more than enough detail down there. Um, and then I was going to do something else. What was I going to do? I'll just go over some of these shapes. You could do a lot of that or just a little. I'll put the sketch for this on the um, website dianeanton.com and you can download it for free if you just pop on over there. It's a good idea to practice drawing it as well though. First of all trace it, download it, trace it and then try and draw it yourself and that's probably the best way to do it. That way you're learning how to draw at the same time as you're learning how to paint. Now there would be nothing to stop you from going back in from place to place, hither and thither, so to speak, and just strengthening some of the color if you want. Maybe on these flowers, you could put another slight um, layer of colour there, for example, there, here, just a dab, maybe a tiny bit of extra green down here or whatever you fancy. But don't go mad. It's nice to keep it nice and fresh. And now we come to the question whether or not we should put any spatter. And I think a little bit of blue, and I really, the other day, or yesterday actually, wasn't it? I did a little tiny bit of turquoise, turquoise, it looks like gouache, I think it is. Just a little bit, and I don't want it to go onto the poppy though, do I? So I need to grab a piece of tissue and uh, just cover up the poppy, and I don't want it to go onto the on there either, or indeed onto the ladybird. So then just, just a little bit. So there we are, all done. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. There's been an absolutely horrible problem the last couple of days with YouTube and their analytics. Um, so if you can't get a message through to me or if it looks like something's gone squirrely on YouTube, um, do bear with us because they've got a bit of a techie problem somewhere in the depths of their computers. So rather them than me. So I'll say bye-bye for now to everybody and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye.